righteousness of my own from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ, the righteousness of God based on faith. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, assuming I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead. We get to join in with the fellowship of God through the blood of Christ because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. We are no longer dead in our trespasses and sins, but alive with Christ. Would you join with me with the breath that you've been giving and worshiping and praising his name and song? A mighty fortress is our God. A bulwark never fails. Our helper, he amid the flood. A mortal hills prevail.
And you know, that song has a lot of testimony. A mighty fortress is our God. Do you believe that? In the midst of all the stuff we're in, we've got a God who is a protector. Hey, welcome. It's good to have you today. You may be seated, and we're glad you've come today. And those who are watching online, we, we welcome you also. But we're delighted to be in the church, in the sanctuary, in the place of worship. And many of you have come together today, and we are thankful for that. And praise the Lord for your attendance and, and for your support. So welcome. You're here, maybe it's the first time, visitor or guest, we're delighted to have you. We, we welcome you. And we have something special that we like to do for our visitors. When our services is over, if you're visiting with us this morning uh, for the first time, we'd like you to go by the information desk, and we've got a gift. We like to give to people who come and, and worship with us in our first-time services or first time in our time of worshiping together. So take a moment after our services and go by that. If you're online and you're watching for the first time, uh, then you send in an offering and we'll send you a gift. I'm just kidding. If, you, if you're watching for the first time and you'd like to have one of these gifts, we'll, we'll be glad to send you one too. It's a special gift reminding you of our church. Somebody showed me something this week that probably we're going to endeavor to do. Uh, it, wearing these masks like we wear is to put something on them, a logo or a name or something, and, and we're going to see about just buying us a bunch of masks if we got to keep wearing them. It says Government Street Baptist Church on it. Amen? And let them see who we are and what we represent. So we're thankful for that. Thank you for being here today, and thank you for worshiping with us. I'd like you to stand again just for a moment as we come. This is the first Sunday for the new year, and Many of you have already had your New Year experience with the Lord, but I'd like for you to join me this morning as we just sort of close out the old year and, and look forward to the new year. Amen? It's going to be a good year. God's going to bless us. And we're going to see his mercy. And maybe if you're here today while our pianist is playing, if you'd like to come to the altar, you can bring your offering while you're coming, and we're just going to stay here at the altar for a moment and, and have a word of prayer together as we pray together. So. If you'd like to come this morning, whether you're coming to give an offering or you're just coming, come and stay with us here at the altar for a moment as we pray together and as we ask God to bless this new year. online this morning, you may just want to kneel by your chair or, or where you are and join the congregation as we come together this morning to pray. God would give us a blessed year, removing us from the past, putting us into the future. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for this time of prayer when we can come to you because you are our fortress and you're a mighty, mighty God. There's none like you. Never will be and never have been. You're God and you're God alone. You reign, you rule, you're great. And we bow before you to tell you today that we love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. And more than anything else, God, in this year of 2021, we want to be your servants. We want to be obedient. We want to follow your will. So as we pray together today, we remember so many things that the past year has brought into our lives, so many things that we even will continue on in this new year. But knowing that you will be fresh every morning, you renew our strength every night, and you will not leave us, and you will not forsake us. So take us as a living sacrifice that we might be wholly acceptable unto you, and you might cleanse us and wash us and make us white as snow. God, we pray for revival. We pray for a spiritual awakening. We pray for your church to come alive and be a light in this new year. Let us be the salt of the earth. Let us be those who show that with faith 
all things are possible in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who came to give us eternal life, who you gave us as a means of talking to you. Through his name we pray. Amen.
thankful for bringing us together today just to worship in your house and to worship your name. Bless this year, bless this church, bless these people. In your heavenly name, amen. Good to be in the Lord's house today and come together to worship. Thank you for joining with us if you're online and if you will mind sharing the fact that we are in worship service, we would love for others to come and join with us as we take the word of God and speak God's word in truth to each of our hearts today. Never, never would I thought I'd be glad to say, thank God that year's over. But I can say that today, honestly, but I'm not for sure about the new year either. Uh, sort of question a lot of things and have emotions about a lot of things. A lot of good things have already happened. Uh, we have a new baby in our congregation in April, and I thought, sure, you would share that with us. Uh, I, your sister did, April, and you're to love one another. And Grandma was excited about that. <laughs> But we're thankful for new blessings this year, and, and I guess the reason why April responded like she did, her and Lance have 22 kids together, <laughs> somewhere down the line. So it bothers her when I talk about babies being born. But it's a good year, and God has already blessed us in so many ways, and we look back into what is behind us and what's before us. Um, some of you know that the psychologist's reports and everything that's going on now tells us that there are serious crises in our land, in our world, it have nothing to do with the virus. It is an after effect or a prof effect from the virus and from the condition is that in this past year, there's been more suicides than there ever been before in the history of our, our nation and our world. There's been Situations where depression and stress and anxiety and insignificance has set in people's lives, where that literally they have come to a bored state of life and do not comprehend what they're struggling with, do not comprehend what's going on in their life because they're struggling with things they've never thought they would struggle with before. And the spectrum is, is that as far as life is concerned, people... And the analysis of this past year, people feel neglect. They, they don't feel like anybody cares anymore. And isn't that strange? In the situation of, of life today and the situation of uh, people being shut in and locked down and people going through these crises, people still feel neglected. And they want to be loved. They want to be in somebody's life or somebody to show them affection. And guys, let me tell you that this new year, the church must wake up and show this kind of love and affection. It's not whether we're quarantined. It's not whether we're going to be exposed to the virus. It's that God's love is the only thing people can feel satisfied with. And you and I have that love. And we've got to find ways to share it like we've never shared it before and show the love of God and the, and the goodness that God gives to us in, in life itself. Because, just to be honest, people cannot handle what they're going through. Well, I've learned to handle it. I've learned to say, God is God, there is no other God, and I'm going to trust him and believe in him. Now, how do you do that, preacher? Well, I, I got the answer for you. The answer is a simple old historical experience that was found among humanity and among people thousands and thousands of years ago. People who went to war and went to battle, people who went to conquer countries, people who tried to survive, people who tried to make it in difficult and strange times, they put into practice something that we're not good at practicing today. And what they did was when they started off in life and on their ventures in life, whether they were going to conquer an army or they was going through some serious crisis, they learned to burn the ships behind them. And there was a reason for that. It was interesting in scriptures how they learned to do that and how they found that a practices in their life. 
because what they wanted to learn to do was to break free from the things that would hinder them or, or release the things that would hold them down and find the way to have a successful life. Do you want a successful life? Do you want a life that's unique? Then maybe one of the things you need to learn to do is burn the ships. And, and I think us modern people know it better as burn the bridges behind us. But you got to be careful about the bridges you burn, but you need to learn how to burn a ship. And in the scriptures this morning, I want to show you how that uh, 21 does not maybe offer us a fresh new idea of life, but it does give us an opportunity to change our lives and become different people than we've ever been before. Uh, the major effect on us has indeed changed everything we're doing today. And so how can we get back to normality in 2021? How can we be successful with what we're dealing with in our lives in these strange times? Because so many things were outside of control, and we want to find a way to bring them under control. We want to make sure that we can comprehend what we need to take into our lives to distance ourselves from our past, from yesterday, from, from last year, into this new year. Now, here's what I want to start off with this morning. There's not a person in this congregation who is sitting here today, and not a person who listened to me, that does not understand that their past has affected their life. If you're here this morning, you know that part of your major problems in your life, if you're still dealing with past experiences, what happened to you? Why did it happen? Why are you where you are today? You can't live happy today because you've still got a ship parked out in the dock that you want to go to every now and then. You haven't learned how to flee the things in your life that you need to flee and turn away with so you can be successful in what you're fixing to do. And in the, in the, in the scriptures itself, the Bible shows us that we need, now listen to this, we need to take desperate actions to change our lives. When I say desperate, I mean burn the ship. When I say desperate, I mean you've got to decide today, do you really, really want a different life than what you've had? And are you willing to take the extreme measures to change your life? There's testimony in the Bible after testimony, people after people, who did some very drastic things. And I'll share some of them with you this morning. But they, take, they took means to step out and do what they needed to do to serve God, knowing that in their heart, the best life, the most glorious life, the most precious life is serving God. How do I learn how to do that? Does God want my life? Does God need my life? Is God calling me to be somebody different in this world? So I want to show you this morning basically how you need to burn the ships. I know some of y'all haven't got ships, but you've got something that looks like a ship in your life. You've got a lot of cargo you're carrying. Some of you've got more cargo than you need. And, and of course, in destroying this ship, you're going to destroy the cargo and and everything you've brought into this service this morning, and everything that's in your life, and there are difficult accounts in the world about people who made drastic decisions to burn their ships. Many of you remember the story of the famous Spanish explorer, Herman Cortez. In 1518, Cortez was commanded to go to Mexico and capture the people of that area because it was understood that the Aztecs, had, Aztecs Indians had a lot of gold and a lot of riches. And, and so the Spanish rulers decided they wanted to conquer Mexico and they, shit their, they sent their ships into the Mexican shores. And Cortez knew that somehow or another his men did not want to go there because if you knew the history a little bit about it, in the midst of that, 
there came another ruler in Spain who canceled Cortez's mission to go to Mexico and told him he did not have to go and did not have to fulfill his mission. But Cortez had set his mind on going there and winning the victory and destroying those group of people so they could have their wealth and their riches that was in their lands and they made that their motive in life. And Cortez realized in the midst of that decision that he was making that at one point, because his men knew the mission had been canceled, that his men may turn against him and want to go back to Spain. Now, you know the history of that, don't you? The history was he sailed his ship into the Mexican shores, and when he did, he commanded all of his ships to go aground. Put every ship in disaster's way and destroyed them. And this is what he knew. He knew that if the men had no way to escape, he knew that if the men had no way of getting back on those ships and going back to Spain, that they would follow him wherever he went. Now, apply that scripturally in just a moment. In 1518, Cortez moved. In 1519, he went to that shoreland, and he told his people, we must win or we must perish. <laughs> Do you know we have a commander called Jesus Christ? Do you understand that Jesus Christ has left us with a decision? He's not making decisions like Cortez did. He's leaving that decision to you and to me. Do you want to sink your ship? Do you want to burn your ship up? Napoleon Hill wrote this long before Cortez ever had his adventures. He says, a long while ago, a great warrior faced a situation which made it necessary for him to make a decision which ensured his success on the battlefield. He was about to send his army against a powerful foe whose men outnumbered his own. He loaded his soldiers into boats, sailed to the enemy's country, unloaded the soldiers and equipment, and then gave the orders to burn the ships and carry them on to their journey. Addressing his men before the first battle, he said, You see, you see men before you, the smoke of the ships. Our ships are going down. We cannot return. That means we cannot leave these shores alive unless we win. I want to tell you something. Folks, if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life today, you're not going to leave this life and live. You're going to die and spend eternity away from God unless you learn how to burn your ships and get rid of your overload and destroy the baggage and make Christ a difference in your life because we only live in Jesus Christ. Now, getting that in your mind just for a moment, it's complicated, I know, but... I want you to understand that to do this that I'm asking you to do today in this 2021 20, year is an extreme measure. It's not difficult to talk about what I'm going to talk to you about and what I'm going to share with you because in our relations to life, that is very hard to do. So get your Bible, get the Word of God, and watch the steps I'm going to walk you through. First, take in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. In chapter 19, we begin reading at verse 19. A very moving story in the Old Testament. You see, what I'm talking about is not new. What I'm talking about is something that God has used in people's lives for centuries and for years and for decades ago. You remember the story of Elijah and Elijah? You remember how this servant of God found it necessary to do something in his life to serve the Lord. And so in verse 19, it begins. So Elijah went for there and found Elijah, the son of Sedad. He was plying with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elijah then lifted, left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and my mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied, what I have done to you. 
So Elijah left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them there. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he sent out to follow Elijah and became his attendant. Threw his arm and cloak around him. Elijah knew that this meant something that was happening in his life, that a torch was being passed from him, from Elijah, into Elijah's hand. And Elijah, comprehend, Elijah comprehended that and understood what he was called to do and what his mission was going to be from that day forth. And so you look at this and you analyze what's, what's going on. Something that we Americans, something that we as people of the 21st century, something that you and I cannot comprehend that must happen in our lives if we're going to be followers of Jesus Christ. The price that it's going to cost us to be a Christian. Now, folks, there are people in this world that I can promise you knows the price of being a Christian. There are those who've been martyred in 2020 because their faith was in Jesus Christ. There'll be those who are martyred in 2021 because they're committed to God full, full, full. But what about you and me? What about us today? Uh, and look at this story just a moment. You would think that Elisha was really a successful man, and he was. The Bible says that he had 12 yoke of oxen. In that day, that would have been a successful man. He could have been an American. He could have been living in the USA because he had success written all over him. There were things that showed that he had accomplished great things in his life. The 12 yoke of oxen meant that he owned a great farm, was very productive in what he was doing. But in his heart, Elisha knew there was something speaking to him every day of his life. Now, if you're a Christian, can I remind you that if you have the Holy Spirit of God in your life, he's speaking to you every day of your life. Ah, don't block it out and say, God hadn't spoke to me. God, if you're reading his word and you're in prayer and the Holy Spirit is in your life, God is speaking to you. If not, you don't have God. God's not there. But if you have, he's speaking to you. And every day that Elisha went out to plow those yoke of oxen, he could hear God talking to him. This is not your job. This is not what you're destined to be. This is not my calling in your life. This is not my will. And I'm going to show you one day what my good and perfect will and destiny is for your life. And Elijah waited. Elijah waited. Every day he looked forward to that, that, that opportunity to follow his God and believe in his God. But in his heart, he knew that when God did move, things were going to change in your life. Let me ask you something. Can you really pinpoint in your life, in the last 20, 30 years, 10 years of your life, can you really pinpoint something that has really, really changed your life? Can you pinpoint something God has done? Has he taken you out of the bar? Has he taken you away from sinful people? Has he removed you out of the community you was living in? Has God in any way changed your life in the past decades of your life? Well, let me tell you something, friend. That's what God does in our lives. He changes us. He makes us different than what we've ever been before in our lives. And so the Bible says that, the, that Elisha is willing to burn the ship. He's willing to change his direction in life. And, and what he did after that was very moving. The Bible says he ran after Elijah. Look at those uh, expressions. He, he fell after the prophet of God. He, he knew the prophet of God had come to show him something different in his life. And, 
and he is not contented with what he is doing, he wants to do something different. I don't know about you, but when 21 came, I just want to be something different. I, I, I want to be, I want something that will make, and I've got a lot to tell you that's made me different, but I want God to do something that will make me totally a different person than I've ever been before. That's what 21 says to me. And so he went after Elijah. and uh, The Bible says that as he went after him, he was asking him, he said, I, I've got something I need to do. I need to go back and, and tell my family bye. I need to go back. And, and if I'm going to follow you, I've got to make some decisions in my life. Now, let me tell you in the New Testament in just a moment, Jesus told this story in a different light. You remember it? He told it in a totally different perspective than this. Jesus told it in a way that affects us so much more. But here, Elijah is, exper Elijah is experiencing this turnaround in his life. He, he's facing a new year. He's facing a, a new way of life, and he feels a new responsibility. So he goes back, and he tells his family, Bye, I, I'm leaving. Whosoever will not forsake their family... And Father, the Lord is not worthy to be called a Christian. That's what it takes sometimes. He goes back, and the Bible says he takes his oxen. And this sounds, this sounds strange. Why didn't he leave his oxen and his plows to his family to work the farm with? Why didn't he leave what he was working with to their care? The Bible doesn't tell us that. The Bible says he took his yoke of oxen, he took his plows, and he burned them, and he used the oxen to cook a meal for his family to have a big feast as, they be, as he began to leave and walk on into a new life. He wanted to let his family know what he's done. He wanted to tell them God has, has brought him to a, a new place in life and a new strategy in life. And to me, that's the testimony that is so real. Are, are you... Are you ready to, today to say to the church, if God speaks to your heart this morning, listen to this. Are you ready to stand before the family of God and say, Pastor, God has called me to burn the ship. God has called me to be a different person. God is speaking to my heart as a father, as a mother, as a child, as a teenager, as a young person, as a grandma or grandpa, God is saying to you, I want you. Now will you burn the ships so you can go ahead and do what I've called you to do. And so the, the, the response of it, Elijah is very interesting. When Elisha told Elijah what he was going to do, he said, I don't have any issue with that. Go on back, do what you have to do to prove, to tell your family what you're doing. When you get through with that, Elijah said, come on, follow me. In other words, here's the story. You need to take care of some business before you get serious with God. Every one of us need to learn how to take care of our business before we get serious with God. So I'm going to get serious with God I'm going to keep my ship, and I'm going to keep my car, and I'm going to keep my house, I'm going to keep my bank. You cannot be serious with God unless you're willing to take care of your business. That's hard, isn't it? That is very difficult, what God calls this man to do. So he goes and he, he takes care of business. He burns his ship. I don't need these oxen anymore, and I don't need any inclination that one day I can come home and start plowing again. You see, when you start following Jesus, friend, you don't want to turn back. When God gives you a mission in your life, and God says, this is a destiny I have for you, and God says, this is my plan for your life, you don't want to ever have anything that takes you back where you've been. And oh, Elijah... Burns those plow, puts the oxen on top of them, cooks them for meat, and has a big feast with his family and says, what God is doing in my life right now is better than anything I've ever experienced. Boy, that is a marvelous experience. 
I, said, I could stop and give you a personal testimony. My life was headed in a certain direction when I was a teenager. And then, all of a sudden, God began to say, Charles, here's your destiny. Man, I didn't want to go there. But I had to burn up the papers of where I was going to school. I had to go from, uh, I had to go from the south to the north. I had to, I had to totally change my whole perspective of what I wanted to be in my life because of what God said. But I want to tell you something. I've been blessed <laughs> more than I can tell you because those who follow the Lord are blessed and they're cared for. And that's what this man knew. He knew that if he followed the Lord that the opportunities would come to him where he could be a different man. And so he, he burns the sacrifice. He burns the ship and he communes himself with one thing, and that is a devotion to God where he would do what God had called him to do. Does every Christian need to burn the ship? It's a good question. Does every one of us need to learn how to burn a ship? Well, God's not calling me into ministry. You're right, maybe. God's not spoken to me about doing his work. You're right, maybe. God hasn't asked me to be a Sunday school teacher or a deacon. You're right, maybe. But I want to tell you there's not a person hearing me speak today from the word of God that God does not have a purpose for your life. Wow. You sit here and say, are you sure? I am definitely sure. Why would God create something that he had no purpose in using? Have you ever listened to the creation moments? of how every little insect, how every little worm, how every little creature in this world is made for a purpose, that everything has a reason to exist, that it serves a function in the world, whether it's in the waters or the sea or on land. Everything God created had a purpose. Now tell me that God would create a human being and not have a purpose for their life. That God intended you to be nothing but who you wanted to be. No, God has a plan. And you and I, in 2021, are in that plan of God. Some way, somehow. So, this man understood that this was a call into his personal life. And he wanted to become that person that God wanted to be. And he wanted to examine the opportunities that God would give him. So, he destroyed those things that would, would ever come back into his life. Now, if you have a problem with this, and I, you're wrestling with it, God, preacher, you're talking about God calling people to the ministry. God's calling people to the mission field. I am, but let me tell you what I'm saying to you as a Christian this morning. It is called, in biblical terms, the Lordship of Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know what the Lordship is? That means he is Lord no matter what else is in your life. Does he rule your life? Does he control your life? You, is he your Lord? And you, do you only bow to him and to him only? Look at that verse in Luke 9, verse 62. Jesus replied, No man who puts his hand to the plow. Wow, why did Jesus bring the plow up? Look at that in Luke 9. He said, no man who puts his hand to the plow. Why is he using the plow? You know what I think Jesus is thinking about? You, you don't you? You know, don't you? He's thinking about that old Elijah who one day took that plow and burned it. Jesus remembered that a man one day made a full commitment to him. Jesus was telling a story today. Would he say, no man who does this and talk about something you have done that changed your life to become a follower of Jesus Christ? So Jesus went back and he said, no man who puts his hand to the plow and looks back to fit for, is, too, is not fit, has no abilities to serve in the kingdom of God. 
Folks, I'm proud to tell you that a lot of things that I'd like to go back and change in 2020, but if I did, I wouldn't be fit for the kingdom of God. I got to burn those ships. I got to remove those things that would call me back or hinder me from being what God desires for me to be and what God wants me to be. I've got to move forward in the kingdom of God to serve him. And there is a new way to do that. Let me put you in perspective here. Was Elisha already a servant of God? Yes. Had he prayed to God? Yes. Did he know about making a sacrifice to God? Yes. Because as soon as God spoke to him, he made a sacrifice. This man was already aware of God, but he knew he was not doing all he could do for God. And here's our problem today. Many of us believe in God. Many of us serve God. Many of us think we're people of God. But nothing's changed our lives to be more than we should be for the Lord. So Elijah knew that. And he knew <coughs> that the once he burned his ship, he could not go back to the shipyard and build another one. He removed everything that would take him back into any kind of form of life he had ever lived. Let me tell you a little story this morning. There's a lot of things you and I need to get out of our lives. A lot of things we need to change. You know it. I know it. We all know it. There's some things in this world today that's doing nothing but destroying us. It may be social media. It may be, it may be things like internet. It may be things like cell phones. <coughs> I don't know. It may be finances. It may be friends that you ought not to have. It may be a job that you're doing that you ought not be doing. You know, I remember, I know y'all don't like talking about the pipe. I remember the day when men would refuse to do a job if they had to work on Sunday. That interesting. Not today. I remember where people made decisions for God and they changed their whole family, their income. It changed where they lived. It changed what they did. There were decisions made in people's lives that said, I'm burning the bridges and I'm burning the ships and I'm never going back to the shipyard again. That's what this man did. That I'm getting rid of it. It's over with. So what, how do you do that? I use the expression in my thoughts today about killing it. Just kill it. Just, you know, they, they tell us on TV... Something else we ought to try to get rid of. But they tell us on TV that when you, you go to get rid of a plant and destroy the weeds, you've got to kill the what? You've got to kill the roots. If you don't kill the roots, then the plant's going to grow. I've seen that more times than one in my life. In a garden. I, I'm a gardener, some of you know. And, and <laughs> if I didn't kill the roots, that stupid weed came right back up again thought I'd gotten rid of it, but I hadn't. Now look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 through 10. Put to death, therefore, that means killing. Put to death, destroy, burn the ship, burn the bridge that's there. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexuality, immortality, impurity, lust, evil desire, Boy, this guy had a book of sins that you wouldn't believe in. And he just plain outright said what they were. Greed, ah, idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. I think we've already seen the wrath of God come because of this, haven't we? So he says, you used to walk in those ways in the life you once lived. But now you must rid yourself of all which of such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken 
off your old self, which is the practice, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of Jesus Christ. Wow. You're sitting here this morning, and I just read that verse in Colossians. There's one of those categories. You and I fit in. And you know it, and you know it to be the truth. In changing our lives, we've got to burn the ship. We've got to change who we are. We need, indeed, not a resolution to change. We need a, a revelation, a revolt, a demonstration to God that we're real. I love the verse in Romans 8 and 7 that says that you say the sinful mind is hostile toward God. The outward nature wants nothing to do with God. But now that you're a Christian, you cannot do anything except to deal with the sin in your life. Um, I'll, that's all I have to deal with. The complications of sin and what sin brings about in our lives. Now, I said all of this because I want to preach my sermon to you now. Turn to the book of Psalms. The 90th Psalm. Very interesting Psalm. This is a Psalm written by, De by Moses. It's in the Psalms. As if we say David wrote all the Psalms. David did not write all the Psalms. The 90th Psalm is written by Moses. The great patriarch of God. And undoubtedly David had picked this out of the annuals of writings. And put them in his Psalms because he read it constantly. Psalms chapter 90. Listen to it. Stand with me if you will. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were born, or thou didst give birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou didst turn men back into dust, and does say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight are like yesterday when it is passed away, or as a watch in the night. Thou hast swept them away like a flood. They are fallen asleep. In the morning they are like the grass which sprouts anew. In the morning it flourishes and sprouts anew. In the evening, from ever toward evening, it fades and withers away. Hmm. For we are but consumed by thine anger and thy wrath, and you try thy wrath, we have been dismayed. Then has thou placed our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of of thy presence. All of our days have declined in thy fury. We have finished our years like a sight. As for our days of our lives, thou contain seventy years. Or in dues of strength, we may gain eighty years. Yet their pride is but labor and sorrow. For soon it is gone. And we fly away. Who understands the power of thine anger. And the fury according to thy fear. That is due thee. Now listen to this. So teach us. To number our days. That we may present to thee. A heart of wisdom. If, be seated. It's what Moses said. Years before the Psalms were ever written. It's what David put into the Psalms to remind him 
of how his life must change to be what God wanted to be. I told you the story of Elijah and Elijah. You remember the story of David, don't you? How many ships did David burn to get to where God wanted him to be? How many times did David count the numbers of his days, the hours he was alive? You know one of the most important instruments you've got in, on you? Or what is one thing you probably say every day of your life? You know what comes out of your mouth probably in same sequence more than anything else? What time is it? Some of you have already asked that this morning. Some of you, I'm watching you, have already looked at your watch. I'm, I'm not going to tell you who you are, but you know who you are. Time is consuming you. And time is limited. Have you ever noticed why they don't put second hands on watches anymore? Have you ever noticed that? This thing I got to a smart watch. <laughs> A lot smarter than I am because I can't even make it work. <laughs> they don't even have a second hand. Why did they put second hands on watches? So you could look at them and watch how fast time passes away. And because we don't want to deal with time anymore, we don't buy watches with second hands. We buy watches that just move one minute at a time. Because life is fleeing so much so fast and we're not taking care of the business we ought to be taking care of what is that business friend your days are numbered there's some bridges you need to burn there's some ships you need to get rid of and you need to destroy them so they will never appear in your life again and you need to know how to do that you need to understand the importance of that. Because David and Moses knew we need to number our days. You're not going to be here forever. And whatever days you've got left, why not change them right now for the Lord? Jesus came to seek and to save those that were lost. Because he knew that so many people would never understand how quickly life was fleeing them. Jesus came to show us a timetable of saying that I have to do what I have to do in my own time, going to the cross and dying. And I have to do that because this is a time of salvation. And then he said, this is the day of salvation. Interesting. It's time for me to move on in my life to believe in Jesus Christ, to, to burn the ships and get rid of the past and move on to where God's called me to, to be. Have you, have you made that decision to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? I'm not talking about coming to church. and I'm not talking about coming Sunday school. Or I'm not talking about having a home that's clean and, and beautiful. I'm talking about a personal relationship with Christ where you burn the bridges and burn the ships and you said from this day forth I will follow the Lord Jesus Christ and I'll accept him as my Lord and my Savior. You know, what's always intrigued me a lot about the scriptures God doesn't just do things simple. <laughs> he does things in a dynamic way. Interesting. He could have saved me by sending an angel down and just say, I'm going to send you Charles Brown. That's not the way he did it. He sent a son down to die on a cross to pay a price. For my sins. Folks, that's drastic. Not just a son, his only son. And what does God expect me to do? 
sit here and say, well, okay, God, I'll love you if I'm blessed, and I'll be in church if the weather's good, and, you know, if there's no pandemic, God, you can count on me. Or does God expect you to burn your ship and take up your cross and follow him? Does God want partial service so you can always go back to the world? Does God want to know if you will always, under every circumstances, hold on to the plow and never turn around? Because if you turn around, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus said, if a man wants to follow Jesus, he can't even go back and take care of his wife or children. He cannot go back and take care of his family. He cannot go back and take care of his business. If a man wants to follow Christ, he starts right now because if you wait you'll never do it I promise you it is a radical decision in 2021 that we commit to following Jesus Christ God you know our hearts how it breaks us to know that sometimes it's hard to take the match strike it and burn the ship Sometimes, God, is, we know the bridge is there, and so we don't take all the planks off from the bridge. We just we want it so that if we can go back, we can go back. We, we don't destroy the bridge. And God, right now in our lives, we, we want to follow you, but we know that it will cost everything we have to follow you. So we want to count the cost. We want to burn the bridges. We want, to destroy. we want to burn the ships. We want our lives in 2021 to be in the center of your will. And God, if you can't take care of us, nobody else can. If you can't provide, nobody else can provide. If you can't save us because you came as a Savior, nobody can save us. Our salvation and our life is fully dependent on you. So here we are. Take us as we are, as a living sacrifice to you in Christ's name. Will you stand with us just for a moment? If you're watching for home and you're wanting to make a decision today, I hope you'll contact the church. If you're here in this congregation this morning and you know that God has called you, not to be a preacher, not to be a missionary, but just call you to, to make Jesus the Lord of your life and for you to want to commit that this morning. It may be radical, but what you ought to do is make your way to the altar quickly and say, Lord, here am I. Use me. Send me. Let me serve you right now. As April leads us, you follow the leadership of God as God speaks to your heart. Weary, burdened, wanderer, there is rest for thee. At the feet of Jesus, in his love, so free.
I just, uh, I feel very, very led of the Lord to share with you guys. I know a lot of you don't know much of my story, but um, throughout my life, I've struggled in the past with depression and with anxiety. And, um, and as you hear the truth of the word of God, um, I'm a recovering perfectionist, and so I like a list. I like to know what I'm supposed to do. Let me mark it off the list. And the thing about Jesus is that he says, bring your burden and lay it down. He's already done the work for us on the cross. And so there are times that I think I need to take up and I need to do my work and I need to make it happen and I need to pull myself out of this and I need to do the, um, do the, the heavy lifting. But Jesus has done the heavy lifting. And the truth of this, come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And the struggle of sin is not something that somebody out there, but the struggle of sin is right here. Um, I still struggle. Um, and the Lord uses a lot of different things. He uses counseling. He uses people in your life. He uses medication. He uses doctors at times. But the truth of the matter is Jesus is it. He's all. He is in all. And he is the one that today we bring our burden and we lay it at his feet and we say, not through my power or my strength, but through the power of Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection, I am raised to newness of life. And so as we sing this song, um, these are not words on a page, but this is the story of my life. That he is good. His burden is light. And if you're heavy laden today, come to Jesus and find rest. Because there's freedom in Christ. Bring him all thy burdens, all thy guilt and sin. Mercy's door is open. Rise up and answer him. There is freedom, taste and see. Hear the call. 
Thank you, Lord. Would you be seated just a moment? Brooks, will you come? Good morning. I hope you've had a great Sunday, and I hope that you've been blessed this morning. We've got a couple of announcements this morning I want you to be aware of. I don't want you to forget about this Wednesday. Uh, we're going to start back Wednesday services and uh, Wednesday nights, and so you, you come on. We're going to have a fellowship, and uh, our fellowship Wednesday night evening uh, dinner and so you come on, and it's going to start at 445, and so, and then uh, short, shortly thereafter, uh, we'll have Bible study in here, and then we'll have Bible studies all over, the, all over the campus. So you come on, be part of us. We'd love for you to be part of us. Those of you that um, are, are not here, that are by Facebook or YouTube, uh, y'all, y'all come too. You don't have to stay there in your home. Um, also... If you do not have Lottie Moon offering envelopes, there's some right out here in the Welcome Center. You can get, get those, um, and you will want to um, continue to give to uh, the international missions. And so also, blessing bags that are out here, we give those out to the homeless. We have, um, we have several blessing bags out there. Uh, you give those to the homeless. You put some things that maybe in there that you're yourself, and then you can go out and tell others about Jesus. Uh, tell, tell the homeless about Jesus uh, as you give those out. Also, Discovery Class, January 10th, starting at 9 o'clock. You want to know more about Go- Government Street Baptist Church? You come to that class. Uh, Brooks will be teaching that. And then also, January 13th, which is Wednesday of next week, I believe, um, is going to be uh, the men's lunch. We meet up in the youth room, and there will be a men's lunch up there. Look for uh, look, look on all of our different websites, uh, website, Facebook, um, for many of the different announcements that are coming up just in case something cancels uh, because who knows what, what may happen in 2021. So, um, but I want you to, uh, just a couple of announcements. So, I wanted to take an opportunity to... to um let you know about a great opportunity that has fallen in our laps and I would uh, love for the church to sponsor this. Uh, in August, I have a friend over in Pensacola, his name's Ronnie Joyce, and he has a uh, television program. Some of you may, uh, may watch his show. He uh, had a winter concert fest that has been held at First Baptist Gulf Shores for the last several years. Well, this year they did not want to host this. And he asked uh, if, if we might host this. And I uh, talked it over with the pastor. This is back in, in August. And uh, we would like to host this concert series. Now, the concert series is always on Friday night. And uh, it starts at 7 o'clock each of these Friday nights. It's held here at the church. And I want you to support these concerts. And uh, I've got a, a posters uh, made up for them on the 15th, which is a week from Friday is when it starts. The inspirations will be here. Now, if you like regular uh, classic four-part harmony, that's perfect group for you. On the 29th, the Mark Trammell Quartet will be here. On the 5th of February, the Neelands will be here in concert. On the 19th of February, Greater Vision will be here in concert, and all these are national groups. And on the 26th of February, Jeff and Sherry Easter will be here in concert. This is part of a winter concert series. And we had uh, an, an additional uh, thing happen, and uh, First Baptist Wilmer has always hosted a big concert with uh, a big blessing and the Kingdom Airs, and they decided not to host it, so we are going to host it here. Uh, the Kingdom Airs will be here on Saturday, January 22nd. That's only a few weeks away. Um, there will be an admission charge where the, uh, uh, the concert series is only $10 at the door, but it does not cost the church anything to host these groups. We're doing it uh, just as a favor to Mr. Joyce and to get these uh, concerts back. I want to encourage all the members and everybody listening out in, in, in Facebook and things like that to support these shows. Uh, a lot of these people have not worked in an entire year because of the COVID. And uh, we will have social distancing, we will wear masks or whatever you feel comfortable with, but I want you to support these shows. You, 
Hi. This is, this is Maddie Bassett, and uh, she uh, recently accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior, and so she's coming today just to make that public, and she wants to become a member of our church and get baptized. And so, yeah. so we are very... We're very happy to have you, Maddie. We're happy for your decision. Maddie, you you ready to do that, aren't you? Yeah. Maddie, <laughs> Maddie's been raised in our church. Thank Shirley and John uh, for their love for her and care for her. And uh, You're glad to have you. Just say amen. amen. Okay. Why don't you go out front, out there, you know where you stand? Some, well, well, Brooks will show you, okay? okay? You go out there and stand with Mom and Dad and... Uh, People come by and shake your hand, hug your neck, and say you're a beautiful girl, okay? Don't believe them. <laughs> Take off. Guys, thank you. Amen. Good to have you today. Good to be here. Amen? Hope you have a good week this week. Uh, God blesses you, and, and you'll start 2021 in a unique way by just burning your ships and getting rid of your bridges. We start over with the Lord. Father, thank you today for this time of worship. Thank you for those who come to follow Christ as their Lord and Savior. Bless us now as we go that we might be a witness and we might be a testimony. In Jesus' name, amen.
Bless the